What's up, Capoeira Nation? Welcome back to the Capoeira Experience Podcast. This is your instructor, Kashi Shi, from Capoeira Brazil, Indianapolis. And today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about my story, about myself, if you don't know me yet. Uh, having done this episode or talk too much about myself since episode number one, that was a little bit over two years ago. This uh, is going to be a special episode because next month I'm, be, I'm going to be celebrating my 20th anniversary. It is a lot of time. Um, it's kind of funny because every time I say 20th uh, anniversary, is like <laughs> when I when I started Capoeira uh, almost all my students were under the one digit age so under 10 it was kind of, it's, it's kind of funny to, to think about it so um, first of all I know you are there listening right now so if you are there Please, 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 please follow the YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. And follow the Instagram, the YouTube channel. You can find it as the Capoeira Experience Podcast. And on Instagram is Podcast Capoeira. And on Facebook is going to be the Capoeira Experience Podcast. You also can find it really quick. So make sure you pass this really quick. Follow. And subscribe there so that way you can find all the interviews all interviews every single interview you're going to see it there and plus you're going to see um my classes i've been posting my my youtube class i'm sorry my zoom classes on my youtube channel and i've been posting uh i have posts before i have some vlogs there when I started the podcast, so if you get some inspiration there and you want to start your own podcast about whatever you want to do, uh, that's pretty much what I what I have there. Uh, eventually, I'm going to do another uh, vlog about my equipment here, what I use, and I'm going to once everything starts backing up, opening back up, I will be doing a um. I'm going to be doing a vlog about uh, of vlogging any trip I do. I haven't done anything like that for a long time. I want you to see the the behind the scene when when a couple is a travels, and I want to focus that about uh, our couple journey, either mine or any couple that around there. We posting. Uh, I'm not going to focus about the events. I'm going to be focusing what I do outside of the events of Capoeira whenever I travel or whenever I meet people or whenever any classes after everything start opening back up. Uh, eventually, I'm going to be moving. Uh, I'm going to have podcasts, I'm going to have classes, I'm going to have a lot of Capoeira information there. Hopefully you can find some inspiration for you to, to keep rocking that Capoeira. Now, about my Capoeira story. So I started Capoeira in 2001. To be specific, I remember, honestly, I remember that class like it was my very, very, like yesterday. I started Capoeira in January, uh, I'm sorry, in February 6th of 2001. Uh, I remember back then uh, where I started, there used to be two classes, one at 4 p.m. and one at 6 p.m. Uh, the 6 p.m. was the beginner's class or or student class or no as advanced class. I, I think we can call it that way. And that class was divided was divided on two. And the beginners, 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 like the first class or third class, stuff like that. And it was the beginner advanced classes, uh, class right next to us. So when I started back in Venezuela, 
if you don't know, I'm originally from Venezuela. Um, when I started there, I was 15 years old. And if you do the math, you will see how, how old I am. <laughs> but back then, I was, you know, just a teenager, trying to find something for me. Uh, I remember before Capoeira, I used to do swimming classes. And I always was fascinated with martial arts. I always was fascinated with gymnastics. I always was fascinated by breakdance. I always liked any sort of like, like disciplines. I always, I always was very fascinated by any sort of, today's days I can, I can describe that as a, as a moment. I, I liked any, any sort of like dances. I like, I always liked, I always was really, really fascinated by uh, contemporary dance. I think was super beautiful. I still think it's uh, really beautiful. Uh, I always was fascinated by, by any martial arts. I remember back then before Capoeira, I used to see uh, Kung Fu movies. I used to watch uh, um, my, my friends or, or see my friends practicing martial arts. I remember somebody in my family, I don't, I don't, I don't remember uh, far cousin or something like that. Uh, he used to do Kung Fu. What's it Kung Fu or karate? Karate, I think. Any of those martial arts. And I remember we went to a competition and when I saw that, I was like, my mind was like blown away. I was like, Man, I want to I wanna be like that. I want to kick like that. I want to punch like that and kick like that and, and be like those guys, like, you know, like kick really hard. And probably a few years after, I found Capoeira. So the way I found Capoeira is kind of, kind of like funny because of my high school. When I was in high school, uh one of my really good friends he's my still like really good friend to this day uh his brother and his uh and his friends were doing a bunch of movements we were just sitting you know in and in, in the hallway just sitting on the ground and they were practicing capoeira in front of us and they were like talking about macaco and talking about aus and, uh, you know, uh, what if I do amada au mostao? And I was like, man, what the hell are they talking about? And I, I elbow him, my friend, uh, Miguel Angel, and I, I elbow him. And I was like, dude, what are they talking about? What the hell are, are, are what the hell is all that, like macaco, au, armada, uh, armada, in Spanish, uh, armada, and all those kind of stuff. And he was like, is is called capoeira. It's like capoeira, what the hell? And yeah, yeah, it's a Brazilian martial art. Oh, dude, you should practice it. You're probably gonna like it. I was like, eh, sure. When is the class? And he was like, classes are uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays. Uh, and during the week, it's at this university. Um, and Saturdays is at the park, big park that we had back in Venezuela. And I was like, oh, will you take me to the class? And I was like, yeah, yeah, for sure. I will take you. Just wait for me next Tuesday outside of the high school. Their class starts at 4, so we probably got to leave by 3.30. I was like, sure, I will be outside of the high school at 3.30. Make sure you are there, and, and we'll go, we'll go to, to, to Capoeira. And he was like, yeah, sure. That Tuesday came around, and... When I showed up at 3.30, 3.25, I was at time of the high school. And 3.30, he never showed up. 3.40, he didn't show up. 3.50, I was like, man, but the class starts at uh, 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 4. How the hell did I get there? I don't even know where it is. And, you know, and, and then I called my other friend, Leonardo, and I was like, dude, come with me and see if, if, if you want to do capoeira with me. And he was like, yeah, sure. We went to the university. When I started walking, he was like, he is, he's called uh, University City. It means huge. It's 
is a massive uh, uh, university. I have no idea. I had no idea where Capoeira was. I had no idea how to get there, much less who, who to look for. So when I when when we get out of the of the subway, I was like, well, whatever, dude. I'm just gonna start walking. If I find it, I'll I'll talk to them. When I get into the the university, it was two 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 ways to I, I see two ways where people were walking. And I was like, I have no idea where to go. Should I go left or should I go right? Then I was like, I'm just gonna follow this this path to my left. And uh, and I'm just gonna follow the people. If I see somebody all dressing crazy and, and I see uh, all, all kind of crazy people, I will, that's probably the class. Then I walk, I walk, I walk for like probably like 10 minutes. And believe me or not, it, it took me right straight to the class. So as I walk, I saw a bunch of people walking, uh, uh, dressing on white. And I saw a dude standing right in front of the circle with a stick on his hand. I was like, I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure that's probably them. And I started walking and walking, walking, walking. When I get closer, the dude that was standing with a stick, the beating ball on his hand was my brother, my, my friend's brother. Then I get close to a circle and I was like, oh man, that's pretty cool. When I get close to a circle, closer to the circle, I see they had, they, they were practicing the song Malandro Malandro. You, if you remember the song, if you don't know what I'm talking about, is the song Malandro Malandro Capoeira Malandro 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 Malandro. So, and I see and, and I see uh, Lanza his his Capoeira name nickname, and I see him and I, I wave at him. He like not at me. I was like, oh, what's up? So I got class to him and I was like, hey, you know, like how how do they do to to do the class? He was like, he pointed at, at, at the instructor, one of the instructors, Pinguim. He was like, go talk to him, to that little guy over there. And he will give you all the information. Okay, sure. I went there. I talked to Pinguim. I was like, hey, you know, I want to learn. I want to do the classes. And he was like, whoa, cool. The first class is free. Just uh, join this group. I will be, he pointed a little group, probably six or seven people. Uh, just wait for me there. And I'll, I'll, I'll be there in, in a few minutes. When I got there, he lined us up and he started teaching us the jinga. It was hot as F. It was really, really hot. It was super sunny. I had uh, these like blue workout pants, like high school workout pants. It was really thick workout pants. And I had a black shirt with like blue, Bob Marley black shirt. And he, I was sweating, I was hot, I was, I, it was crazy. And because my mom was really, really strict back then, she was like, if you're going to be around there, I don't want you home when it's dark. And I was like, God damn it, okay, sure. At the end of the class, I don't, I don't, the only thing I don't remember about that day is like which moments we practice. So when, when we, we when we finish the class, everybody starts sitting in the hall. They start talking before the hall. And I was like, man, I want to stay, but I, I can't stay longer. It started getting dark. I got to go home. So I left and I missed the hall. So I have to do that for probably about a month. I, I did that probably for a month until like, I was like, man, why these people get all together and do like this circle, they bring all these in crazy instruments. What is going on? What, what, what do they do there? And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to stay five more minutes, just five more minutes. And, and so, so I can find out so I can see what, what they do. The first hard that I saw was like, what really, really, really got me into Capoeira. When I saw that hoda, I saw 
all the advanced people playing capoeira, I was like, oh my God, what the hell is this, man? This is so cool. This is pretty much everything I've been looking for. This is pretty much all these movements, all these kicks, all these flips. Man, I have to, I have, I have to do next class. Right, right before the 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 hoda ended, uh, I saw the time. The, so the class was the from four to five thirty. At five thirty, the class started, and like usually, uh, I used to finish like around six. Uh, I'm sorry, five fifty. So like around five forty five, I was like, oh my god, and it was it was already kind of like dark. I was like, my mind's gonna kill me. I I I grab my backpack and sprint to the to the highway. Uh, then once one as uh in the the following week, I start a little bit like two minutes later. In the following week, I stay like two more minutes later until I finally stayed until the hada finished, where all the video bus stopped and all that. And Man, it was just like so cool to see, especially as a little kid. I was at 15 years old. And I was like, man, this is so cool. This is blowing my mind every single time I see the Hoda. I want to be like them. I want to I wanna train like them. And, and I want to learn everything they do. I want to learn everything they practicing. I want to know. Oh, I don't even know what the hell they're singing. And I want to know how to get there how do i get there and since i was a little kid since i was a little 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 kid i was being very 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 inquisitive i always want to know the what happens in between what is what is i always question stuff on a good way like why why this thing is like this or how this thing works how 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 stuff works and and how can you get from point A to point B? I want to know what is in between. So he was uh, once I start training, 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 and it start getting uh, uh, more into the classes. It start getting more into the classes. I got my uniform. I got my shirt. I got my first uh, chord, the rock chord. And it was just like, I always wanted to learn more. Then once, it, it's kind of funny, and, and I don't know if that happened to you guys or, or, or that, you're, that you that are listening. If, if you started with a group, let's say five, right? Let's put, just put a number. Usually, one person stay. Usually, it's, it's very common. So I started with about seven people, eight people, and I'm the only one of that group that to still do capoeira to these days, which is really cool, right? Is is like capoeira really got me. So when when I fall in love with capoeira, when I found more more stuff about about capoeira and learning more, and then I started learning uh, birimbao, then I started learning pandero. I got my first CD. Man, it was just like I, I was so involved in capoeira, and probably after five, uh, the six, my first month, six months, they they were planning for their their first bachisado. Uh, I wasn't able to participate because I, uh, back then, uh, by that time, by my first six months, I didn't have my abada yet, and I wasn't able to participate. I I asked the instructor at the moment, and I was like, hey. Am I getting a court? And he was like, "Do you have the uniform?" I was like, "No." I was like, "Man, sorry, you 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 won't be able to participate." I was like, "God damn it!" And I was like, "Do do they need to get the uniform?" And he was like, "Yeah, you have to get the uniform and all that." And I was like, "Damn it!" And because uh, then when I got home, I was like, "Mom, I want to get the uniform for Capoeira." And she was like, no, I'm not spending money on that, blah, 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 blah. I was already about 16 years old. Uh, so I, I started Capoeira in February, and I think when I was 15, and same year, 
on June, I turned 16. So my sweet 16, oh, so cute. So when, when I went back home and asked my mom, hey, any money to buy the uniform? No way I'm going to buy your uniform. Get out of here. I was like, God damn it. Okay, fine. Then I'll just watch. Then the first bachisado, I love Capoeira even more because they do it a lot of solos. And there was a few guys in the group that they, they did uh, uh, backflips and all that. Man. He just like, every time I saw that, I was like, man, how did they get there? I want to be like them. And, and training and training, years pass. Again, come back to, to what I was saying before. I learned beating bow. I learned pandero. I learned atabaque. And that in specific order, that's, that's how I learned. Um, then about, I learned beating bow within my first year, year and a half. I don't really remember the time I was already playing beating bow. I know for a fact, I think I started playing beating bow in the Hoda probably after my second year. Uh, but I was very, very committed to, 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 to playing beating bow in the Hoda. I remember my instructor, Pinguim, the one that taught me the Jinga, he gave me this cassette. If you, if you don't know what a cassette is, look it up. Cassette tape where he, he, he made it himself and he was on the tape. He was Kashishi. The best way for you to learn beating bow is repeating the sound. Repeat the sound as I play with me. And he described, he broke it down the same way I broke it down. Uh, that's the way I learned. And that's the way, the, the way I, I taught before beating bow. And I always see people getting it somehow. I don't know the, the, the magic behind that. But once you associate the, the voice with the brain, the brain is going to associate with the hand and the sound is going to come out, especially the timing and the rhythm and, and the capoeira sounds or, or the capoeira rhythms. So he described Angola. He described uh, in the group I started with Jaices do Brasil, uh, Benguela, and he just tries, uh, described San Bento Grande Regional. He described San Bento Grande de Angola. He described uh, Yuna. He described Idalina. He described uh, two types of cavalarias that he know that he knew by then. Um, and he described others I don't really remember. Uh, did I say Santa Maria? And, and he described others. And he broke down every single one of them. You know, and, and every time I go home, the first thing I did was play the tape. And the first time I got home, the first thing I did was play the tape. Every, every time after Capoeira, until one day I decide, I ask him, hey, do you think it's fine if I take the beating box with me at home? Yeah, sure. Uh, I used to lock myself in the room, strung the beating ball, like put all the beating ball together, and start repeating those sounds I was listening for like a couple months on the beating ball. Dun, 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 ding, ding, ding. And then practicing and practicing and practicing. Only that. And then, of course, I tried to practice Angola. I tried to practice Benguela. And then eventually I got it. I don't know how many times I practiced. And yeah, man. And, and I, I was in love with the Capoeira music. And then I started learning Portuguese. And I started to understand what, what was behind the meaning of every time they, they had they, they played. The, the scene in the Hoda. And then everything started making sense after making connections. So if you're listening right now, I highly recommend for you to understand Portuguese. You don't have to speak it, but if you understand, man, I promise you are going to, to connect with a different sense of capoeira because you can, the, there's different ways. So it's the movements while, while we practice in the Hoda. Uh, the instruments, what well, we play in the hard, but it's also the music. That third element is going to, to make a very deep connection in between the other two. 
once you understand what you are singing or you understand what the music or, or what people sing through the music, man, you are going to play way different. I promise you. You are going to play way different because you are connected. You are connected in a completely, completely different level. And I promise you, learn Portuguese. Learn, 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 learn Portuguese because you are going to be connected in a completely different way. And once I learned Portuguese back then, that's, that, that is what, it, what connected me very, very deep to Capoeira and made me understand what is behind all the same essence of Capoeira. I promise you, you're going to like it even more. And then, you know, I started playing so much Capoeira. I was training once probably in my third year, fourth year, uh, probably fifth year. I'll, I'll, let, let me say fifth year. I started training Capoeira every single day, every single day, because Monday, it was so many classes around. We they, There were many instructors by, by then, and I was just like, well, let me go to this class on Monday. And then now on the university where I started classes on Tuesday and then on Wednesday it was on this other place. And Thursday, the university where I was, on Friday, this other place. And Saturday at the park where everybody met with like all the classes during the week met, met on Saturday. And then Sunday was a different class in different place. So I was training every single day, playing beating ball every single day singing capoeira every single day. Then I started getting my courts, I started getting my level. And then my first trip to Brazil was to a state called Boa Vista, or it's a city. I don't remember. But once I travel, and of course, I speak Portuguese. Uh, I spoke Portuguese back then. And, and my Portuguese was kind of like, okay. And then... I started practicing more capoeira. I got deeper into capoeira. And I stayed. My first trip was for w one week. Let me see. Was it one week? I think it was one week. Yes. Yes. One week. Then when I came back, of course, I wanted to train more. And then I did so many presentations. I did presentations on front of any kind of crowd. We did presentation in prison, uh, 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 on jail to kids uh, under 18. Uh, I did presentations on uh, soccer games over, oh my God, I don't know. I was like, I want to say probably over 3,000 people, probably even more. But this, I know the stadium, I I didn't know. I, I don't know how, what is the capacity of the stadium, but it was packed um then I, uh, back then i used to do backflips i learned how to do backflips uh, with my friends and then i i unfortunately i fell uh this day i was uh, was this is the way <laughs> it was kind of now that i look back he's kind of funny that's that's that is my fear of, of the backflips to these days. So that, that's why I don't do backflips. So uh, I, was, I was training with my friend. I was doing all kinds of backflips, just to the back, on the side. Uh, the one is kind of like turning. The one is kicking, and you flip. Um, I was doing Asimao backflip. I was doing a bunch of stuff back then. Uh, I don't remember the age, if you ask me. So all my friends, we were a group of probably eight. All of us started uh, doing backflips. The night before, of oh, oh, that Tuesday or Thursday, I don't remember, it, it rained very, very lightly, right? Very, very light rain. When... Um, when I got... When everybody got there, one of my friends was like, hey, let's do sprint 
and do all like a like a sequence of backflips. And so I run backflip, the next run backflip, the next fat backflip, and so on, you know, one by one, one by one. We did it probably five, six times. When it was my turn on one of those rounds, I did round off. When I bounced, the, I slip on the grass. I looked like a cat was like thrown upside down on the air. Man, I freaked out on the air and I tried to catch myself in the back and I hit on my neck. It was a mess. And I remember that, I don't know, it was like, you know, I saw my friends coming to me and all, all I remember is just mumbling. Because I, I, I couldn't understand because I was um, all crazy, right? My, my head was all over the place. Then one of my friends was like, you have to do it again because if you don't do it, you're going to be scared to do it next time. You have to do it again. Here, let's go, let's go. Even if just by yourself, I was like, dude, I'm super dizzy right now. My my finger, one of my fingers was like swallowed because I tried to catch and I twist it. And it, it was just crazy. If I wouldn't done the backflip back then, I would be fine doing backflips right now. But I didn't. And now I can do backflips on the trampoline. <laughs> But uh, yeah, man, it was it was just crazy. And today's days, I'm super grateful for for capoeira. Uh, capoeira changed my life. Capoeira changed a hundred percent, hundred percent who I was. Uh, the kashishi that you see today's days recording this podcast is not even close of the kashishi that was before when I started Capoeira. I was extremely shy. I was extremely introvert, introverted. Uh, I was a very, very introverted kid. I, I was shy to approach people. I was very shy to shake hands, very shy to make eye contact. And fun fact for you to, to get kind of an, an idea of how shy I was back then, I didn't play in the Hoda for one year. It took me a little bit over one year for me to play in the Hoda, in the main, main Hoda, for me to buy the game. The first time I bought the game, I felt I wanted to die. I, I was about to die <laughs> because I was so nervous. Nothing happened to me. Nothing dangerous was. I wasn't in danger, but I was so shy. I was so scared. I knew to do almost all the movements. And I knew how to do an au, I know how to jinga, I know how to do malayu frenchy, I know how to do queixada, I know to how to do jole, all those kind of stuff. When I, the first time I stepped into the hotel, the first time I bought the game, the only thing I knew what to do was a malayu frenchy. I was so shy, so scared. And I did probably like two malayu frenchies and that was it. And then the second time, I don't remember. But he was so scared. I I remember because I was very, very scared. And, you know, Capoeira changed my life, man. Capoeira changed who I was. Capoeira made me understand myself. Capoeira made me to challenge myself. And Capoeira made me make so many friends. I have no idea how many friends I have that have met in person. There's only one friend that have a meet in person that Capoeira brought to me called Congo, my professor, Professor Congo, one of my best friends. Uh, and, you know, it's just, I'm just happy of what Capoeira have bring me to me, have done for me. Uh, and, you know, Maybe, maybe, maybe Capoeira saved my life. I don't know. I don't know what I have, I wouldn't done if I never went to a Capoeira class or if my friend was like, never showed up and I was just turn around and go back home. But something I can tell you is, you know, we are here 
temporarily. We're here. Uh, we're just passing by in this life. And it's just something that I've been thinking about many times, you know. We are here for for a very short time. Look, 2020 was gone just like that. How, how many of you think that Capoeira, the, the 2020 was passed so much so fast, right? Because this is just a crazy stuff. And, you know, Capoeira made me so many friends. Capoeira gave me so many friends. Capoeira helps me to be in the present, to be today's day, to be here today. And, you know, we're here for a reason. We're here to enjoy life. We're here to, to you know, to pass Temporarily, we our time in this planet is very short, and we have to live it to a max, man. We have to be grateful. We have to be happy, and and you have to respect yourself. You have to respect the person in front of you. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter who, who the person is. And once we understand the essence of capoeira which is people we are going to love people just in general okay this art for these last 20 years i have learned that capoeira is for people capoeira is about people and capoeira is made from people this and i've said it many times i've said it many times this uh art form uh, art form was made from people to made to to bring people together. Once we understand that, I mean you're gonna appreciate the person in front of you. And and it doesn't matter how they look like, it doesn't matter what they believe, it doesn't matter who they are, it doesn't matter even even if if their moral doesn't align with my moral, I'm still gonna respect you. You know, and and you know just go your way, I'll go my way. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, be disrespectful with you just because we think different or believe in different perspective or I see stuff different colors that you do. We're here, and I said it many times, and, and many of my guests said it many times, once we are inside the Hada, inside the Capoeira Hada, everybody speaks the same language. So I highly recommend play so much, play so much capoeira. And that's pretty much my story. That's pretty much what I, how, how you started. Uh, I would love for you to follow my capoeira journey. And because I know my capoeira journey can be different from somebody, but my capoeira journey can be similar to somebody, you know, and, and I hope you can find any motivation inspiration or or ideas for you to keep going keep going nice and hard on your capoeira that way you you evolve and and, and grow your capoeira learn beating bow man learn beating bow learn, play good it's not just for you to just like mess around for you to play in the harder for you to sing in the harder and playing events you know play beating bow in events and and singing uh, learn portuguese so you can understand mestres so you can understand people learning uh how to communicate in capoeira uh, so you can learn what the music says behind so you can learn everything you can make sure you learn make sure you learn and make sure you learn okay but especially capoeira okay talking about capoeira here and you know, join my my journey of the podcast. Make sure you follow. Make sure uh, you you um, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Go to the Facebook, and if you have to pass it really quick, pass it, and then go there subscribe. And today, now that you made it this far, is a special announcement because bam, today is going to be. Uh, Today is going to be the announcement for the giveaway. This beautiful beanie. 
town from Tombo, baby, from Tombo. This beautiful beanie is going to somebody right now, right now, right now. And let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay, so we have, let me see, we have all these comments, all these comments. This is nice. This is nice. Okay, perfect. Okay. So here, let me turn this down a little bit. Okay. So all the comments. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go like this. Okay. All the way to the top. Let's go like this. To and you. <laughs> I'm gonna send it to you, brother. Sua, instructor Sua. Okay, here. Make sure you follow my brother, instructor Sua. I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna send you, bra. I'm gonna send you this. Okay. If you are listening to this, instructor Sua, I'm gonna send you this, Vinny, brother. Thank you so much for following and thank you so much for being part of the podcast. I'm going to bring you on the podcast very soon. So make sure you are part of this episode. Now it's time to wrap it up. So please, 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 please make sure YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Okay. Instructor Sua, go there, follow Instructor Sua, tell him how much you love him because he just got this beanie, beanie, beanie. Next time, by I'm going to start another giveaway of another beanie. So if you made it this far, you are going to be the first to hear about this giveaway. Okay. Bam, 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 bam different color, this beautiful gray. I have these two beanies, okay? The blue is gone, next is gray, okay? Unisex, man, this is beautiful. My wife uses mine. Mine is gray, darker than this. Looks beautiful, okay? I also wear it and it's beautiful. So this is it. This is the end of this episode. I'm super happy to be part of your journey. Please, 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 let's be on the podcast. Let me bring you on the podcast. Let me hear. I want to learn from your experience. Okay. I want to learn. I want to know who you are. I want to see your face because I know we're going to play in the huddle one day. Okay. Have fun. Be great. Be good. Keep training Capoeira. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going, okay? Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. Thank you so much for making it this far. Thank you so much for following this journey, okay? Go to episode number one and number two so you can listen from the beginning, from the beginning. Let's be friends. Let's be friendly. Let's be great. Let's keep training Capoeira. Keep supporting your school, okay? Thank you so much. Love you all. Love my Capoeira community. Love you so much. I'm going to be celebrating my 20th anniversary next month. With my students, my first batch is out. All right. Thank you so much. Peace. Peace. Peace out. See you guys next time. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for getting this far. Remember, please subscribe. Give us a thumbs up on Facebook or YouTube. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. This is going to help us and help me to get bigger numbers and bigger subscribers so we can give more information, okay? Please, if you're listening, I know you're listening, I know you're watching, please give me a subscribe, give me a, give, give me a like, okay? I know you're watching right here or listening, all right? Have an amazing day. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening every single episode, especially the episode we just did. All right. Thank you so much. Peace.